Hello and welcome to the virtual webinar for the Consolidated Annual Performance Evaluation Report, also known as the CAPER, presented by the City of Fresno Housing and Community Development Division. In this presentation, we will provide an overview of the report and provide information regarding how the public can submit comments. First, we'll briefly discuss the U.S. Department of Housing and Community Development Community Planning and Development Programs and the role of the CAPER. Then we'll review the accomplishments reported in the CAPER by priority area, including affordable housing, homelessness, community services, and public facilities and public improvements. The CAPER also reports on fair housing activities, so we'll discuss accomplishments in that category as well. Finally, we'll provide information about how the public can comment on the CAPER. First, what is a HUD CPD program? What's the CAPER? We'll explain in this section. HUD CPD is the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development's Community Planning and Development Office. The Office of Community Planning and Development, CPD, seeks to develop viable communities by promoting integrated approaches that provide decent housing, a suitable living environment, and expanded economic opportunities for low and moderate income persons. The primary means toward this end is the development of partnerships among all levels of government and the private sector, including for-profit and non-profit organizations. In the next slides, we'll talk about how the city partners with HUD CPD to help meet these goals. Before every program year, HUD CPD announces the funding that will be made available to the city through the four programs in which the city participates. The Community Development Block Grant, or CDBG, Home Investment Partner Partnerships, or HOME, Emergency Solutions Grant, or ESG, and Housing Opportunities for Persons with HIV AIDS, or HOPWA. These four programs make funding available for different eligible activities but overall seek to meet the national objective of providing benefit to low and moderate income persons. Next, the city prepares its goals in an annual action plan in consultation with residents regarding the most critical needs in the community. The annual action plan also needs to be consistent with the goals and priorities that the city adopted through a five-year consolidated plan. Once the annual action plan is approved by the city council and submitted to HUD, the city implements the projects, programs, and activities in the plan by either providing funding and technical assistance to city divisions or to nonprofits and organization subrecipients, which are awarded funding after an application process. Those city divisions and nonprofit subrecipients then perform the activities throughout the year. Later in this presentation, you'll be introduced to the activities that were performed during the 2020 2021 program year. Throughout the program year, and especially at the end of the program year, the city divisions and nonprofit subrecipients who received funding report how they spent their HUD CPD funds and their accomplishments to the city. The city then collects all the information into a single performance report called the CAPER. The City Council approves the CAPER after the public has been invited to comment on it. This public opportunity to review and comment is not only required by HUD, but it's also an important step for the city to make sure that its activities are transparent and that it's continuously listening to the needs of the community in order to improve future plans and activities. Once the City Council has approved the CAPER, the report is submitted to HUD. Submitting the CAPER is a requirement for the city to continue to receive funding. The program year 2020 CAPER reports on the expenses and accomplishments recorded between July 1st, 2020 and June 30th, 2021. Many activities are multi-year projects, in which case their accomplishments will usually only be reported in the final year. There are some exceptions to this rule, such as for community service activities, which will report accomplishments as they occur. During the course of the program year, approximately $5.9 million was expended to administer and perform activities. This included approximately $3.4 million in CDBG funds, $1.3 million in home funds, $697,000 in ESG funds, and $487,000 in HOPWA funds. 
The accomplishments reported in the caper are typically reported as the number of persons assisted or the number of affordable housing units constructed or rehabilitated. The accomplishments in the report are grouped by which priority they support. These priorities are determined in consultation with the community in the city's five-year consolidated plan. The priorities for the 2020 caper are affordable housing, homelessness, community services, and public facilities and public improvements. The CAPER is also used by the city to report its efforts in removing the barriers to fair housing, identified in another HUD report called the Analysis of Impediments to Fair Housing Choice. In the next section, we'll go over the accomplishments in each of these priority areas for the 2020 program year. Three goals are associated with the city's priority to increase development, preservation, and rehabilitation of affordable housing for low income and special needs households. The first homeowner housing added was for 10 units with the city's actual being seven with the completion of two projects. The first project completed was Habitat for Humanity's B and Amador project that consisted of four five bedroom, two bathroom, single family homes. The second was Habitat for Humanity's Central Lots project, which consisted of the construction of one three-bedroom, two-bathroom, and two four-bathroom, four-bedroom, two-bathroom single-family homes. The city did not meet its goal of 54 homeowner housing rehabilitations, largely due to COVID-19, but was able to complete 30 rehabilitations. The third goal of 26 rental units constructed was surpassed, with the completion of Self-Help Enterprises and a Dale Commons Senior Housing Project, which consisted of the development of a 40-unit apartment complex containing one and two bedroom units, a single-story community room, and on- and off-site improvements. While no home or CDBG-funded projects were completed by June 30, 2020, Several projects were underway during the program year, including Habitat for Humanity's Barkas and Rialto single family housing project, consisting of new construction of two three bedroom, two bathroom homes, attached garages, and on and off site improvements. The total project cost is estimated at $653,237, of which $392,000 is to be provided for eligible construction costs and subsequent home, uh, home buyer mortgage assistance for households at 60% to 80% of area median income. FCTC's LP's Fancher Creek Senior Housing Project consists of new construction of 180 multifamily senior housing units and on and off-site improvements. Construction was scheduled to begin October 15th, 2020 the city provided $2,259,784 in CDBG funds for the acquisition of the two-acre project site located at Fancher Creek Drive and Marion Avenue. In addition, the city provided $1,420,500 in home funding for the eligible pre-development and construction costs. The estimated project cost is $31 million. Self-Help Enterprises Annadale Phase II Single Family Housing Project, consisting of new construction of 22 single family housing units and on and off site improvements. The city provided $2,568,000 in home funding for the construction of the project. The estimated project cost was $14,139,895. Fresno Housing Authority's Monarch at Chinatown Project consisting of new construction of 57 multifamily housing units and on and off site improvements. The total project cost is estimated at $32,239,714, of which $397,118 is to be provided for eligible construction costs. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the city experienced a decrease in project completions. As a result, the city implemented interim procedures to minimize potential risks associated with program operations. 
The city will continue to conduct owner-occupied home repair programs for low and moderate income households through the city's Housing and Community Development Division and its subrecipients in a manner that prioritizes the health and well-being of families, contractors, and program staff. Altogether, the city and its subrecipients assisted 30 households with home repair, senior, senior paint programs, roof repair, minor code compliance, and housing rehabilitation programs. Through the Emergency Solutions Grant, the city partnered up with the Marjorie Mason Center, West Care, and Pavarello House to provide emergency shelter, street outreach services, rapid rehousing, homelessness prevention, and temporary emergency shelter. In total, 786 homeless and at-risk persons were, ser were served in program year 2020 through ESG and 77 persons were served using ESG coronavirus funds. Tenant-based rental assistance programs, often referred to as TBRA, subsidized private market, market units for homeless and low-income households to increase affordability. During the program year, the Fresno Housing Authority used home funds to assist 32 persons. Another goal for planning year 2020 was to improve public infrastructure and facilities, and the city was able to exceed that goal by more than 500%. Public facility or infrastructure improvements reports the number of individuals who reside in the service area of a completed public facility or infrastructure improvement, which was improved using CDBG funds during the program year. Unlike other activities, this is considered an area benefit which means that every individual who resides in the service area, uh, service area designated to receive a benefit from the improvement is counted in the total. The City of Fresno Public Works Department completed three roadway reconstruction projects utilizing CDBG funds during program year 2020. The first project benefited 3,665 persons in the Kawa Vine MLK neighborhood. The second roadway reconstruction project completed by the City of Fresno Public Works Department benefited 11,375 persons in the Shields, Dakota, Crystal, Hughes neighborhood. The third roadway reconstruction project completed by the City of Fresno Public Works Department benefited 2,555 persons in the Orange, Cedar, Butler, California neighborhood. All three projects included pavement reconstruction, including uh, complete pavement removal, recompacting and repairing the asphalt base as needed, and reconstructing each pavement section. Neighborhood residents have benefited from the restoration of the previously deteriorate, deteriorated roadways, which are now safer to drive on, as well as walk across and ride bicycles down. In addition, city crews were able to repair curb ramps and gutters for improved ADA accessibility and an overall neighborhood commute improvement. The City of Fresno Parks Department completed four parks improvements during the program year using CDBG funds. Fink White Park received a new play structure. Holmes Park received funding for Americans with Disabilities Remediation. Ted C. Wills Community Center received funding for various improvements, and Romaine Park received funding for improvements to doors and bathrooms. Several additional public facilities and public improvements projects have received funding or are currently underway. Accomplishments for these projects will be reported in the CAPER for the program year in which they're completed. Projects underway include El Dorado, Frank H. Ball, Maxiel Parks, Pinedale, Romaine, uh, Tupman, Cary Park, designed for renovations to various learner pools, Hinton, Granny's Park, JSK Victoria West, Dickey Playground, Fink White, and planning and design and completion of ADA improvements at various park locations. The fourth goal was to provide assistance to low-income and special needs households through community services activities.
For this goal, 2,300 persons were expected to benefit and 837 persons actually benefited during the program year. COVID-19 had an adverse effect on the after-school programs offered at our neighborhood centers. Under the CDC guidelines and city protocols, the Parks Department had to adopt a cohort model program and had to adhere to strict social distancing, mask mandates, sanitizing, and out-only protocols. These restrictions made it very challenging to develop and implement a program that was meaningful, fun, and safe. Staff did an excellent job with all aspects of these restrictions. However, parks saw a reduced number of participants due to weather concerns over the virus and kids not wanting to participate in restricted activities. As a whole, the Parks Department served 315 unique individuals in the cohort model. Effective July 6, 2021, parks shifted back to a drop-in model and attendance numbers started to increase. In addition to the cohort and drop-in models between September 2020 and December 2020, the Parks Department developed, produced, recorded, and posted virtual recreation programs on the city's website. The virtual model had 891 hits or views. The Parks Department also had to modify its senior programs because of COVID-19 and held virtual programs that served 94 unique individuals. Local nonprofit organizations also offered community services using CDBG funding. Boys and Girls Club of Fresno County utilized CDBG funds to provide education, job training, and recreation for youth ages 6 to 18 years at its East and West Fresno Community Centers. During program year 2020, the program served 183 youth. Fresno Economic Opportunities Commission Street Saints program served 45 youth operating in three community center sites in Southwest Fresno at Big B Villa, MLK Square Apartments, and the Sunset Community Center. Stone Soup served 159 people by conducting 15 outreach events. The Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation offered uh, the first cohort of its 2021 class of womenpreneurs and Latinapreneurs a weekly live marketing training for eight consecutive weeks. The organization helped attendees work on creating, creating their strategic marketing plan and business pitch. It also conducted one-on-one -on -one technical assistance focusing on the permitting and licensing processes. The City of Fresno is also required by HUD to report on activities in support of fair housing. The City updates its Analysis of Impediments to Fair Housing Choice, or AI document, through an analysis of pub and public participation at least every five years. The most recent update was in 2020. The AI identifies barriers to fair housing choice and provides recommended activities to address those barriers. The City then reports activities undertaken according to those recommendations in each year's CAPER report. A comprehensive summary of the activities undertaken to address each recommendation in the AI is included in CAPER section CR35. In this presentation, we'll provide a few notable highlights. Note that, so, that the recommendations of the AI include activities that will address overt fair housing issues, as well as activities uh, which address the systemic issues that contribute to barriers to fa fair housing choice. The City of Fresno increased its CDBG allocation for fair housing by 25% in program year 2020. The City provided funds to Central California Legal Services and the Community Housing Council of Fresno to provide outreach and counseling services to residents and educational materials were provided in Spanish, Hmong, and English. In program year 2020, the city, in partnership with community benefit organizations, also began the emergency rental assistance program to improve housing stability in these unprecedented and uncertain economic times for those residents who have been impacted by COVID-19. Program year 2020 was a difficult year for reliable employment because of the impacts of COVID-19 on the economy and overall workforce. The city planned CDBG funds for micro enterprises, which funded a program through the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation to help low income women entrepreneurs establish and grow their businesses and develop their strategic marketing plans.
The program focused on helping beneficiaries get their product or services on the market while building capacity in the areas of marketing, sales, financial literacy, and other business fundamentals. The city also allocated CDBG funds to the city's public works department to make improvements to streets, sidewalks, and neighborhoods. The areas targeted for improvement included Yosemite Middle School, Highway City, West Fresno Elementary, Burroughs Elementary, and Erickson Elementary. CDBG funds were programmed to pay for a licensed lead certified contractor to paint the exterior of low income senior homes with the possibility of including minor repairs. Additionally, $1.02 million were allocated to address the home repair and housing rehabilitation needs of low income homeowners. The city's 2020-2024 consolidated plan included, includes a goal to improve access to affordable housing for low income and special needs households by partnering with interested developers to increase development of low income and affordable housing in high opportunity areas. Through substantial amendment 2019-04, the city programmed $7.1 million to support the development of affordable housing in areas of op opportunity. Additionally, the city plans to program $1.1 million in home program income funds to support the development of affordable housing in areas of opportunity. We'll now discuss how the public may comment on the draft caper. The city encouraged residents to offer comments on the caper during the comment period beginning on August 13th and ending on September 13th. Comments may be submitted by mail to the City of Fresno Planning and Development Department, Attention Housing and Community Development Division, 2600 Fresno Street, Room 3065, Fresno, California, 93721. Comments may also be submitted by email to hcdd at fresno.gov. Please include 2020 CAPER in the subject line. Comments may be submitted by phone by calling 559-621-8300 by, and by TTY text telephone at 559-621-8721 by fax to 559-457-1579 and online by going to the address on the screen. Residents may also comment during a public hearing uh, prior to the City Council consideration on September 16, 2021. Virtual participation instructions will be posted on the agenda with at least three business days prior to the City Council meeting and may be found at www.fresno.gov slash calendar dot as PX. Individuals may request additional accommodations by contacting the Office of the City Clerk at 559-621-7650 or by emailing clerk at fresno.gov at least three business days prior to the meeting. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the City's Consolidated Annual Performance Evaluation Report for Program Year 2020. To view the report in its entirety, please visit www.fresno.gov housing.